Worshipped by the Aztecs long ago, jaguars are still creatures of mystery. Much about their lives remains a secret even to scientists, while most people have only been able to film tame animals like these. So this, the biggest cat in the Americas, is also the most enigmatic. Determined to change all this, Owen Newman and Amanda Barrett, specialists in filming elusive cats, head to Brazil. Filming jaguars will be their greatest challenge. Jaguar biologists wrestled to get to grips with their subjects. Finding the animals to radio collar is incredibly hard. So how can an animal as hard to pin down as this ever be caught on camera? The jaguar's heartland lies in the Amazon basin, but jungles are too dense for filming. There might be a chance here, in the open wetlands of the Pantanal. This is one of the last great strongholds for jaguars. 55,000 square miles of spectacular watery wilderness. There are also people here raising cattle. So how does an endangered big cat like the jaguar live alongside them? As a cameraman, it's so exciting to be here, but even better, somewhere out there are jaguars. This giant wetland is a tough place to film in. There are only a few farm tracks, but we have a secret weapon, swamp buggies. They go through water and over land. Miles from the nearest town, this is a ranch called Santa Sofia. It's like a place that time has forgotten. Seven cowboys live here, looking after 3,000 cows. <laughs> Our host is Beatrice Hondon. Bia was born and bred here, and her enthusiasm for the Pantanal is infectious. Her biggest passion is the Jaguar. She's even painted her Jeep to look like one. I like Jaguars because the Jaguar is the most, most proud animal for me in the world. He's very handsome, he's very elegant. He feels really the king of the nature here in Pantanal. Her house is a shrine to jaguars. She once adored hunting them. It was an important part of local culture until it was banned over 30 years ago. Now, it's not the dead, but the living jaguar that fascinates her. Every day, our most important talking between us is, did you see a jaguar? Did you see a, a jaguar track? Did you see something? We admire the jaguar. We are proud of the jaguar. She's working with a Brazilian scientist to protect them on her ranch. His name is Leandro Silveira. Ever since he was a small boy brought up in town, Leandro has been captivated by jaguars. Now, he lives out in the wilderness trying to discover more about their lives. We still don't know how many cubs a female would raise in her lifetime. How many cubs make to maturity. 
we don't even know how long a jag would live in the wild. And all these are key questions to be answered if we are to save the species in the long term. However, his record of seeing jaguars doesn't instill us with much confidence. I've been studying jaguars for 11 years. I have seen jaguars in the wild for no more than eight times. Trying hard to be positive, we head out to look for the cats just as we'd do in Africa. We carefully explore all the likely areas we come across and since jaguars love wet places, the buggies really come into their own. We scour the marshes for days and head for the woods. There's absolutely nothing, not a glimpse of a jaguar, not even a sign. It's November and the rains have started already. There's lush growth everywhere we look. A jaguar could be just five meters away and we'd never see it. Finally, some fresh jaguar tracks. We turn to plan B. Stay put and maybe a jaguar will come to me. So this is it, the track that Leandro and Beatrice both say is the best place to see jaguars. You just have to wait. Jaguars are the biggest predator here, and they'll eat anything. So if there was one around, the coates would be frightened. But they're not. The next day, I moved down the track, still listening for alarm calls. Not a peep. A collared anteater seems not to have a care in the world. Over the next few days, it's the same story. This time, laid back peccaries. Even the toucans are too calm. Are there really any jaguars here? Bea wants to show us evidence that they really do exist. She takes us to a cow killed by a jaguar the previous day. Oh, what well, the scratches. Those um, bones, they are broken. And the neck is bloated too because I am sure that the neck is broken. He's broken the neck. Ah, yeah. it's James Bond. <laughs> yes, like James Bond. <laughs> Cattle were brought here by the Portuguese 250 years ago. They've been bred to be big and docile. To a jaguar, that means slow, clumsy and easy to catch. So ranchers retaliated and killed hundreds of jaguars each year. Today, killing jaguars is illegal, but with this history, it's no wonder they're wary of people. Dealing with shy animals like these is our speciality, and we've got a trick or two up our sleeves. Based on our experience with leopards in Zambia, we think jaguars, which are shy during the day, will be much more approachable at night. Our infrared lights reveal an entire cast of new characters, white-tailed deer and crab-eating foxes, even a giant anteater. They're all behaving normally, so clearly the lights are not disturbing them. A few nights later, we get a lucky break. 
we find a cow killed by a jaguar and its body still warm. We clearly see deep puncture wounds made by the cat's canines, but nothing's been eaten. We are sure that the hungry cat will return, but must give it space. We draw back 50 meters or so and stay absolutely quiet. Mosquitoes are horrendous. It's been an awful night. In the next few weeks, we find more cows killed by jaguars and set up cameras again and again. By now, we'd have had success with any of the African cats we filmed, so wonder why jaguars are so much more elusive. We start to find answers back at the ranch. Apparently, frustrated farmers are still killing jaguars. Bia doesn't want to follow suit, but she says up to a hundred of her cows are killed by the cats every year. Leandro is eager to find a solution and has created the Jaguar Conservation Fund. We compensate her for each cow that is preyed by Jaguar. The only thing is that she needs to show us the cow. There needs to be a carcass to be checked on. We need to make sure that there are enough evidence to prove it's a kill. There are 10 other ranches in Leandro's project getting compensation of about $150 per cow. But this isn't enough. To be good for us, the compensation, you need to be the same price of each cattle the jaguar kills. For example, a bull, price of a bull. A cow, a price of a cow. We don't lost money. Why to kill jaguars? No reason to kill. The fund does more than compensate. It also gives free medical care to the cowboys and soon hopes to provide subsidized veterinary care for the cattle. If the financial benefits of having jaguars could outweigh the disadvantages, a million acres of private ranchland will become a safe haven for the cats. But how are we ever going to film jaguars? The next day, we join Leandro at dawn. His team's at the ranch next door, the Estancia Cayman, preparing to capture a jaguar and attach a radio collar. I never imagined I'd be chasing after jaguars with a pack of foxhounds. It goes against the grain, but there's little choice. This is the best way to flush out jaguars. But it's the same way that people hunt them to kill. When we find fresh tracks, the master hound, the real expert at detecting jaguar scent, is released. Then the rest are unleashed as backup. Jaguars are smart. They head straight for deep water or thick, thorny vegetation, and they repeatedly double back on their tracks to confuse the dogs. The jaguar has eaten this calf, so it might be nearby, handicapped by the weight of its meal. I get my first sight of a jaguar, but the circumstances are so traumatic for the cat that I don't feel any joy. 
I know that it's for the good of the species, but is this the only time I'm going to see a jaguar in the wild? It's only been tranquilized, but I can't help thinking that thousands of jaguars have been cornered and shot for real, just like this. When it falls, we take comfort in the fact that no jaguars have been injured by this team before. We must be dead quiet. Under sedation, the jaguar can still hear and see everything that's going on. People fall silent anyway. Like me, they're amazed to be so close to such a beautiful and magnificent animal. It's a female. We discover she's heavily pregnant, but the team is confident that their modern drugs won't harm the unborn cubs. The vet thinks she's only a few days away from giving birth and tries, with no luck, to work out how many cubs there might be. Measurements and blood samples will give them information about her genes, health and age. The team name her Marcia, and she weighs in at an impressive 176 pounds. It seems a bit of a circus to us, but Leandro is trying to turn the locals into Jaguar fans by giving them a chance to see a living, breathing Jaguar in the wild. <laughs> it's the closest Beer has ever been to a wild Jaguar, and since 99% of the Pantanal is privately owned, the support of people like her will make all the difference to the future of Jaguars. Marcy's life can now be carefully monitored, but with the thick vegetation, the Andrews team will hardly ever see her, even though they'll know exactly where she is. This is the problem. Jaguars are so good at hiding. Using cameras triggered by motion sensors might work, but the cats here rarely use regular trails. We need help. And this could be it. The heavy rains in January. later, the Pantanal is in flood. Most animals congregate on the few remaining patches of dry ground, and the jaguars follow. Now we have a much better chance with our remote cameras. But the buggies let us down. Their engines aren't powerful enough to push through the thick vegetation just below the surface. We're reduced to horsepower, and progress is frustratingly slow. Beer suggests we try filming on a track where the buggies will operate more easily. She thinks this raised trail will be a regular Jaguar highway. It's the best situation we've had so far for the remote cameras, and we've got three weeks before the waters recede. An infrared beam across the track is the trigger. First time in weeks, we're really confident. All we must do now is wait for the cameras to deliver. What can go wrong? <laughs> it 
<laughs> it's unbelievable. Everything seems to be using the track, apart from Jaguars. <laughs> uh -oh. Cows. Oh, oh, my God. It's a Jaguar, isn't it? No, it's no, it's an We've never seen an ocelot before, so it's great to film one in the wild, but it's not what we came here for. Pretty hopeless, then. It's so frustrating that we leave the camera tracks running to visit Sandra Cavalcanti, a biologist working on a neighbouring ranch. Her jaguars have GPS collars recording their locations every two hours, 24 hours a day. What she doesn't know about jaguars isn't worth knowing. This image shows our study area, Fazenda Sete, with 42,000 hectares. And using the GPS collars on those cats, we have been able to gather a total of 15,000 locations on 10 different individuals. The main prey items uh, for jaguars uh, are caiman and peccaries. Others will base their diet on a much more varied menu. How many times have you seen jaguar behavior in the wild? It's really, really tough. I mean, here we are for five years now, following them day after day after day, and we have gotten a few glimpses of them. So why is it so hard to see jaguars? What are they doing? Maybe you can, you know, get close to it and try to get a peek of it. You know, the cat has heard you way before, and he's long gone. For now, the remote cameras are our best hope. We need them working day and night. Are we sure it's working? It still looks like a disaster. Can you try the other one? I don't believe this. No, it's still flashing. Okay, that's working. I mean, it's just absolutely stupid. How does it look? <laughs> oh, brilliant. While we worry, Ram's life continues in the casual Brazilian way. There's nothing else we can do apart from wait. But our spirits revive when Beer invites us out into the forest for an intriguing rendezvous. Amanda, look, Urban is telling me that it's a taruman tree. Uh -huh. And uh, it's very use it for jaguars for to scratch he used to stay there very hard to oh. look around oh. because there is water here it would be fantastic to yeah. get pictures of the jaguar oh. scratching the tree it's exciting but unnerving when we find jaguar prints right on top of the buggy tracks just who is stalking whom We put out another camera. We're so desperate to get a shot that we even put down catnip. Domestic cats love the scent. Maybe jaguars will as well. Something's triggered the camera tracks, but we don't know what. No, a crab eating raccoon. Take 40, a tapir. Tape 49, another ocelot. 
A fox on tape 51. But then... Oh, my God! Oh, a Jaguar! She could have walked straight past the camera. Thank goodness. The catnip's a winner. We've been told that the biggest jaguars of all are found in the Pantanal. And she looks enormous. I love her pattern of spots, even in black and white. She's fantastic. Sandra calls us the next day and our euphoria ends. One of her study animals has been shot at by a cowboy and she needs to find out whether it's dead or alive. We thought jaguars were protected here, so what's going on? We've come face to face with the darker side to the Pantanal. The ranch owners promised to protect jaguars, but guns and machismo still rule. As Leandro says, jaguars sometimes end up dead if they have a surprise encounter with a cowboy. Traditionally, the cowboys defended themselves from jaguars by using their guns. There is no statistics on jaguar attacks. So what we can conclude is that naturally jaguars don't attack people. But that's the excuse cowboys use. We hear stories that foreign trophy hunters are also killing jaguars. For the moment, no one wants to speak openly to us. But Leandro says that with time, he might find someone who will. Now we know. To survive here, jaguars have still got to be expert at hiding from people. We'll need a lot of luck to get any more footage. It's June, and we decide to start staking out water holes to see if a jaguar turns up. We spend days battling with cattle flies. The dry season is beginning to bite. Water scarce now, and by nine o'clock the temperature soars to well over 40 degrees. Surely there are some thirsty jaguars out there. Once again, everything seems so calm. One night, we choose a different water hole. It's very hot even at night, and many familiar animals are still slaking their thirst.
at the water's edge, the remains of another dead cow. Then, the mood changes. It's a jaguar, a magnificent female. Ironically, after all our months of searching, she's turned up just an hour after we've arrived. She's only 20 meters away. I hardly dare breathe. If I stare away now, I would be completely devastated. Being out here with such an incredible animal in the dead of night is making me practically tingle with excitement. Filming her myself is just so much better than working with remote cameras. This is one of the best nights in my whole life. She's doing something we didn't expect. Ranchers told us that jaguars never scavenge dead cows, preferring to make their own kills. But now we have the evidence that they do. As our jaguar melts back into the darkness, we know that the chances of seeing, let alone filming another one, are really low. The next morning there's no jaguar, but there is the carcass of a cow that's died off to being caught in a fence. <laughs> Jaguars had nothing to do with this death. Snakes and toxic plants also kill cows. I wonder whether jaguars are getting more of the blame than they deserve. A local belief is that older or injured jaguars are the main cattle killers. But Sandra's found one jaguar that's doing exactly the opposite. This is a picture of uh, Vauvaux's first capture. You can see that he had already one uh, missing canine. And this is his second capture. He had lost the other upper canine as well. So he has only two canines and he's still doing fine. This male has been killing peccaries, marsh deer, feral hogs, and these are all pretty dangerous species as far as capturing them and they can cause some pretty bad injury to the predator. This cow has died after getting stuck in the mud. All over the ranch we see dead and dying cows. Surely more are killed like this than by jaguar attack. We turn to Leandro for answers. There is an overestimation of how many cows the ranchers are losing. We had only had provision in one, two, three ranches in this period. Yeah. Although they all said they had this change of six. Yeah. That shows that even where we do have a lot of problem of jaguar killing cows, there's still a lot of overestimation by the ranchers. This information can help these people be more tolerant and maybe change their deep-rooted belief that jaguars are the main cause of their losses. 
We feel it's easy to demonize an animal whose behavior is little known and is so rarely seen. So perhaps our film will also help Leandro change these entrenched views. But just as we're about to go back to the waterhole, disaster strikes. The customs officials inform us that we haven't obtained the correct temporary import permit for the buggies. They have to go to the nearest border, Bolivia, and then be re-imported back into Brazil. But they promise us that the matter will be resolved happily in a few days. So here I am on foot and frustrated I find it easy to get close to Capybara, but there's little chance of getting close to a Jaguar like this. Anyway, Capybara are lovely to work with, and we've got to get a film of some sort. A few days turn into a week, and then two weeks. We hire a small car from town, which isn't much good and Amanda spends her time on the phone. By any chance, have you any news of the buggies? Only I'm just keen to try and talk to someone before the weekend. Another week passes. Dealing with Brazilian customs is proving to be just as tricky as finding Jaguars. Without the buggies, we can't reach the waterhole where we filmed the Jaguar, and we can't film at night. I understood it. Some bit of paper was signed again. But now it's Friday and I've heard no news and can't believe it's going to be another weekend. This is a beautiful place to film. But with the buggies still ensnared in Brazilian bureaucracy, I feel desperate. news from Leandro. He's managed to persuade Berto Fiore, a local hunter, to talk to us. Leandro finds that he can get useful information from people like this. Even so, the relationship is uneasy. We're trying to conserve and he traditionally has been eliminating the cat. It's a very uncomfortable situation because we're talking to someone that's doing exactly the opposite of what we would like people to be doing. I hunted 25 years and I killed more than 200 jaguars. I can't explain why I like hunt. I can't. Maybe you can say this is one idiot, but I like it's my blood, it's my life. So you killed the three cubs? No, four. Three jaguars and one puma in a day. Berto wants jaguar hunting to be made legal. Official quotas would be established and ranchers would get money in return for the elimination of so-called problem animals. Whether he's right or wrong, his passion for his sport is clear. Would you be sad if there were no more Jaguars? If the Jaguar finish, I will be very unhappy. I won't save the Jaguar. Later, we see a video of hunters killing Jaguars for sport. It's too horrific to show here. It makes us determined to get more film of these magnificent cats alive. It's now August, and after five weeks stuck in customs, the buggies are back.
we head straight back to the pond where we'd been so successful with the jaguar before. We arrive at dusk and find we've got company. A cow that's firmly stuck in the mud. An ocelot makes an appearance. Perhaps it's a good omen. Why is the ocelot so nervous? Is it us? It's the female that we'd filmed being radio collared. The pregnant one they called Marcia. So does she have any cubs? Thank goodness, there they are. It's incredible. What's going to happen next? She looks more nervous than the cow. I've been told all along that jaguars are cow killers, so her reaction is a total surprise. Perhaps the jaguar doesn't know how to react to an animal that's not trying to run away. Or well, she's recently made a kill, a peccary or a caiman, and she's not hungry. I'm sure cubs as young as these have never been filmed or even watched like this before. The cubs are only three and a half months old but I'm surprised to see that they're taller and heavier than lion cubs of the same age. The female is fascinated by the cow, and that means she's not taking her family away. We'll probably never get such a good opportunity as this ever again. This is just so special. Scientists think that cubs stay with their mothers for 18 months or so before becoming independent and leading solitary lives. But we know that at least two female jaguars are sharing this waterhole. So maybe they're more sociable than people think. Or maybe they're related. Who knows? With jaguars, there are just so many unanswered questions. After such an extraordinary encounter, we can't help wondering what the future might hold for this family.
we've discovered why jaguars can thrive here despite a history of persecution. There's plenty of places in which they can escape, even the most determined of hunters. And there's lots for them to eat, peccaries, caiman, capybara, as well as a few cows. Unlike many other places in the world, 250 years of cattle ranching here hasn't fundamentally changed the Pantanal. And that's why jaguars have survived. Ironically, the worst thing for jaguars would be for their traditional enemies, the cattle owners, to disappear. But can people and jaguars exist together more happily? Perhaps consumers would be willing to pay higher prices for beef raised on official jaguar-friendly ranches. At least biologists like Leandro and Sandra are working hard to establish facts, overturn prejudice, and find ways for jaguars to pay their way. But for us, the reality is here and now. The next morning is magical. The jaguars are still here, and we're right in front of the animals that no one thought we could ever film in daylight. The family has totally accepted us in just a few hours. If hunting stopped, I reckon jaguars could be as easy to see, watch and photograph as leopards are today in the Serengeti. If jaguars became that easy, increasing numbers of tourists would bring more money into the Pantanal. We found jaguars represent many different things to many different people. Some adore their mystery and beauty. Others are fascinated by their power and strength. Sadly, there are also those that see them as a problem that needs to be eliminated. Or worse, as an animal that can be hunted and killed for so-called sport. But all we wanted to do was to see them for what they truly are, and by getting pictures like these in the wild, we can share this amazing experience with others. For a wildlife filmmaker, this makes everything worthwhile. Am I recording? Yeah. Okay, this is a tricky bit. Now we're going to get to the game, Amanda. I thought I was nearly through that time. Yeah. This is f***ing looking, driving these things. 